Hi, in this video, we're going to look at WordPress critical errors and how you can work out what's caused them using FTP, narrow down the potential causes, and hopefully fix it just using file transfer protocol software. Now, what I mean by a WordPress critical error is when you have an error on your site and you don't know exactly what's caused it. Basically, you go to your WordPress site and you see an error message like this saying there's been a critical error. Now, typically, this usually happens either when you update WordPress itself or when you update a plugin or when you add a new plugin or when you update a theme or when you add a new or activate a new theme. Those are typically the things that cause an error like this and it's also why we always recommend that you take a backup before you do any updates or changes to your site just in case something goes wrong so that you've got something to go back to. It's only when this happens that you realize just how important it is to have those backups both the automated regular backups on a weekly basis or daily if you're doing a lot of blogging and indeed take that extra backup when you're making changes to your site. Okay, so those are the things that normally cause this kind of error. Let's have a look at what you can do about it once it happens. First of all, you're going to need some FTP software. This is File Transfer Protocol Software, short version FTP, and there's a really good one that you can download for free. So simply search in Google for download FileZilla and find the link to filezilla-project.org and then download. Go to that page, you'll end up on something that looks like this, and you want to download the FileZilla client and install the software. Now, I'm not going to show you how to do that. Basically, download the software to your local PC and run it once you've downloaded. And once you've installed it, you'll have the FileZilla software that you can spark up and run, and it will look something like this. Okay, using FTP software FileZilla. Uh, this may look a little scary if you've never used software like this before. Trust me, it's quite easy. It's basically a file explorer for your web server so that you can look at the different files in the different folders. Now, the first thing we need to do is actually add a site. So we're going to click on this button here and open up the file manager. You'll notice I've already got some sites set up. When you're first setting up the software, you'll need to add a new site. So click on the new site button and you'll need to pop in the host, which is normally FTP followed by your site name. Then you'll need to put in a username and a password. Obviously, I'm blanking mine out for privacy, but get that information from your host. If you don't already have it, you should have actually received it in an email from your host when you first set up your web hosting. If you didn't, get in touch with your web host that will be able to provide you with that information. Okay, once that's set up, you will also need to go to the advanced tab and then you can browse to your local computer folder where you're storing files for that particular site. It is worth having a folder for each site so you can store backups and extra files, images, things like that locally as well. So browse to that and set that up. You also want to put in the default remote directory, the directory that it will log on to automatically, which for 99% of cases will be front slash public underscore HTML just as I've got there. So go with that. If you don't put that in, if you forget, you'll simply need to navigate to that folder once you've logged on to your site. Once you have popped in all the information, simply click on connect and it will connect to your web server. Now basically what we have here is on the left, we've got our local computer and the different folders and files that we have available on our computer. And on the right, we have the same thing for our web server. And you can see that rather than being in the root directory, we're automatically logged into the public HTML directory because that I set that up in the advanced settings. Now, if we make this window a bit bigger, let's remove or make this one small at the bottom. You can see the files that constitute WordPress itself. So WP sign up, settings, mail, login, etc. If I scroll on down, you'll see there are three main folders that WordPress uses. The one that we're interested in is WP content. The other two, WP includes and WP admin, don't touch, don't fiddle with them, don't play with them. Definitely don't delete anything in there unless you know exactly what you're doing because that will break your WordPress site. Okay, so what we're going to do is double click on the WP content folder to go into that folder and have a look inside here. Now, the next thing to do is go through a series of logical steps to work out what it is that's caused the critical error. Now, it's most likely going to be a plugin that's causing a conflict either with another plugin or with WordPress itself because of WordPress update. So the first thing we're going to do is right click on the plugins folder and we're going to rename this directory. So click on rename or this folder. I'm going to click at the end of that and I'm going to put dash 
off and then I'm going to click away from it so that now is called plugins dash off basically that will stop WordPress recognizing the plugins directory so none of the plugins will be activated none of them will be active or working basically it's a quick way of switching all your plugins off if you now go back to your WordPress site and refresh the browser if it loads up then you know it's a plugin that has caused the problem there may be other errors shown on the page because some of your plugins aren't working but if the critical error has gone then you know it's a plugin that's causing the problem and we'll have a look at what to do, how to figure out which plugin it is in a moment. But first, if you're still getting the critical error, then it's most likely a theme. So we're going to do the same thing with themes, but we're not actually going to switch off the whole themes folder because WordPress does need a theme to run. So what we're actually going to do is open up a themes folder and inside there, we're going to find the theme that we're using, which in this case for this blog would be Ocean WP. And again, I'm going to click on rename, go to the end of the name, type in dash, and off and then click away so that that theme folder has now been renamed with the dash off and again that has the effect of switching that theme off for WordPress and it will then default to one of the default themes which for instance in this one the only one available is 2021 which is one of the WordPress default themes that comes with WordPress the latest one for 2021 you should always have one of those default themes available within your WordPress system but one is enough so you don't have, need to have loads of them and again we now go back to our WordPress site, refresh the browser to see if the critical error has now been fixed. If it has, you know it's the theme. So you can go back, switch on your plugins by renaming your plugins folder back to just plugins and then log in and maybe install a new theme to try out or maybe look at how you can upgrade your existing theme or find out from the support why it's broken for this particular upgrade. That's most likely going to be the case if you've had a WordPress upgrade and your theme hasn't caught up and there's some sort of error so you'll probably get an upgrade for or an update for the theme itself in due course and be able to get your theme running again so check with the support team for that particular theme now if on the other hand that's still not fixed if you're still getting a critical error then you really do have a problem this is where that backup is going to be super important and the best thing to do would be roll back to the latest backup that you have and take care in the new updates now if you don't actually have a backup you could have a major problem the best thing to do in that case is go and talk to your host and see if they can work out what the problem is because they may well be able to fix it for you or if they have a backup for you that they can roll you back to most good hosts will have a backup option for you and most good hosts will have support that can help you out and get the problem fixed anyway so that is always an option available now on the other hand if it is a plugin let's go back and look at what we do to work out which plugin it is and fix it now, obviously before I do so I'm going to quickly rename my theme folder back to what it should be let's get rid of the off at the end and we're going to go back to the WP content folder and you can see that we've got the plugins folder as plugins dash off what we're going to do is open that up and then we need to go through each individual plugin rename the folder and put dash off at the end of each one okay so we just go through doing them one by one clicking on rename dash off at the end so what we're actually doing is switching off all the different plugins within a plugin folder once you've switched them all off you then come out and rename the plugin folder without the off so let's go back to WB content we come back to here rename this and take off the off part at the end and click away so now our plugins folder is working again but because we've renamed the individual plugin folders all of them with off at the end none of the plugins will be working so what you then do is go through each individual plugin removing the off to switch it on one by one to work through them and find out which plugin is actually causing you the problem obviously I'm not going to go through and do the, all of that in this video it would make it a very long video but it's basically a process of elimination switch off all your plugins by renaming all their folders then go through and switch them on one by one to work out which plugin is causing the problem once you do switch that one off remove it and find an alternative if you can or get in touch with the support team for that particular plugin ask them about it and find out what the solution is the odds are it's something to do with an upgrade and they'll probably be working on an update to the plugin to get it working again okay so that's how you can work out what's causing a critical error on your site and fix it by removing the plugin or theme until you get an update for it as I say always make sure you've got backups before you do updates and always contact your web host support to ask them because they may well be able to work out what the problem 
is and fix it for you or provide a backup to restore to get you back up and running. Now there is one other thing that I'd like to show you as well. It is possible for you to upload plugins manually from your local hard disk. Obviously nowadays it's very easy to install plugins from WordPress inside the admin panel itself. But if you ever need to add a new plugin manually, you can do so. All you need to do is navigate to your local folder where you've got your plugins stored and plugins usually come in a zip file. What you'll need to do is open that zip file up and unzip it so you've got the folder for that plugin locally and then you can simply drag and drop that particular folder into your plugins folder and that will update that plugin or add the new plugin for you. Now I'm actually not going to drop it here in this case because it would overwrite my existing plugin but you can see how all you need to do is choose the plugin folder that you want and drag and drop it into the plugins folder itself and that will either update the existing plugin or add it as a new plugin for you. Okay so now you know how important it is to take backups and if you do have a critical error there is something potentially you can do about it so don't panic, talk to your support, have a look yourself using FTP and see if you can get it fixed yourself. And of course, if you did find this useful, please like the video and subscribe to my channel and leave a comment down below if you have any questions. Thank you very much for watching.